Hey everybody, Jordan here. Welcome back to another Lego Room vlog. Yeah, I know, I need a haircut. Desperately. But yeah, what are we going to be working on today? We're actually going to be working underneath the Lego City. Down here. We've been thinking about working down there for quite some time. Uh, we're working on the 3 in 1 castle today, we're actually finishing that off. That's the double one. We've got our big King's Castle down there. And we've got some big changes that are going to be happening here. As soon as Ikea provides us the right cabinets, as soon as they get them in stock so that we can order them. But even before I go to Ikea and we get all those cabinets that are going underneath the table here, we need to make some changes that are going to help us prepare for that time. So this is what we have in store today. Okay, so down here we have this large platform. And this large platform isn't going anywhere. This one here is going to hold our castle. So we're gonna make a giant castle scene right here, which is going to be pretty darn neat. I've always wanted a castle scene and I think that's gonna be pretty sweet. So we already built this castle right here. She's just doing some R&D for some other projects. But this is our other castle that we're currently building using rebrickable instructions right here, which is essentially two of the three-in-one castles. And we're going to build an epic battle scene down here. We're going to try and locate or buy an army of, of uh, knights. And we're going to hopefully build a whole bunch more catapults, similar to the one right there. And we're going to create just an epic medieval battle scene down here. That's obviously not happening today because it is a bloody mess down here. So we need to tidy this whole area up down here to help accommodate our new changes. First thing that we actually have to do is move this platform, actually remove it altogether. We're getting rid of one of the platforms that creates sort of the perimeter layout and we're gonna be changing it. We're gonna be putting one of these platforms actually in the center running between the center of the tables where all those loose parts are there on the ground. So you can see I've already started manipulating the train track there a little bit. Now, why are we doing that? Well, because we got to fit our cabinets right here that are actually gonna become shelving units. I'm really excited about that because it's gonna help clean up this view right here. So when you're looking at the Lego City, where it's in the shot, you're not gonna see a hoard down there that doesn't really look that clean but rather you're gonna see shelves that are sort of like the Billy shelves, obviously shorter though, they're the same height as table legs, and they're gonna go along right here, and then the train, or the connecting train lines will be behind that, so that the trains can start in the train yard here because this platform's not going anywhere, and then make the way to the other side and go for a loop around the fantasy sort of castle area. So yeah, why am I doing this right now? Just because I'm really excited about doing it. And I can't wait for Ikea to get those cabinets in stock. So I'm just gonna do it anyway today. So why are we deciding to move this inward right here? Well, that's because our city is 100 inches wide. And because our city is 100 inches wide, we cannot reach the center of the table. So as you've probably seen in previous updates, we moved this modular table right here to access the center of the city. And in order to move the modular table, we have to slide this out. Every time we have to slide that out, if there's train track on there, we have to disconnect the train track and essentially destroy what's ever on there. And after doing it about 10 times, we've discovered that that's a little bit inefficient. So rather than moving it all the time when we slide out the modular table, we're gonna move this inward so that we don't have to destroy things and it's also easier to move the modular table. In theory, it was good. It does, honestly doesn't take that long to move, but it's just gonna make life easier if we have the center connected and then only have one connection and sort of a winding train track coming out that way. It'll be a dual line. Let's get that set up. First thing I gotta go do is actually get my drill and remove some of these platforms. Oh, there we go. Just added another piece of wood to the old lumber yard here in the garage. And with the removal of that, it's actually incredible how open it is down here. It almost just makes the room feel bigger even though it's underneath the table. I don't know if that makes sense. But it also reveals all of the parts that we need to sort. Yay! 
All right, so I'm army crawling on the ground here. And I see all of those parts that we need to sort. And also all of those parts over there that we need to sort as well. Woo! You know what? It's hockey season. And uh, I think we're going to be sorting parts while watching hockey. Now you have proof that I'm laying on the ground with you guys. <laughs> so now that we've removed that table, we're starting to work on our large train yard here. Obviously I had to redo it because the point of entry and exit are different from what they used to be. I just can't get over how much space there is down here. It's crazy. Like even standing from this perspective and not seeing like tables right there just opens up this room like, like crazy. It's really cool. But yeah, now we're going to work on the, the train yard. Coming up with some ideas here, and it's time to use some of these base plates here. But we have a problem. These are actually 15-inch base plates, and this platform right here is 40 inches. So obviously not divisible by 15. I'm going to have to figure out what to do there. So uh, a couple weeks has passed since we started working on these changes. And Ikea has the things that we need in stock, which is exciting. Well, this isn't what we need, but uh, you guys know that we've been running the Lego trains a lot more and I actually use these rechargeable batteries to operate the trains. Not these ones, the AAAs, whatever they are. And they actually work fantastic, but I need more because when powering what seems to be a ridiculous amount of Lego trains and also uh, Lego rides and stuff like that, we seem to be running out of batteries quite often, so it'd be nice to have a backup charger and also uh, backup batteries as well. So we actually need two of these Besta cabinets right here. They're 120 centimeters long, which is the same length as our Lego city tables, and they're 64 centimeters tall, which is about six centimeters shorter than our Lego table. So they're actually gonna work as shelving and as legs if I put a toe kick on the bottom of them. So I'm gonna get two of these cabinets and they're gonna go underneath the Lego City there and act as some nice shelving that'll actually hold up the tables. So we brought our cabinets home and we actually built both of them now and now I'm starting to test fit them here underneath the table. Also, I reorganized all these base plates over here so they're all around the King's Castle now so that looks pretty good. And then I actually came across the Bricktober promo at Toys R Us. You need to spend $65 to get it. So I bought seven more green base plates as well. So we ended up building the Medieval Castle 2 that uses two of the three-in-one castle sets. And that was on Rebrickable.com by Bricktype. And now look at this. Jose's parting it out. And we're about to part out a third set because we're actually going to be building the medieval fortress. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, this video has been going for a long time, you know? Like, since we started making this video, we built the new Batman Tumblr. I've got to reorganize our DC Comics display dome. Ask me why I'm wearing my sweater as a scarf. Where did they do that? Like the 80s or something like that? Plus, we like revised this whole area over here in the desk and we built the Titanic. Woo! That's not going underneath the table though. So this has nothing to do with the under table changes, but still, pretty pumped on that. I was just filming some stuff, so now I've got like TVs and stuff on the ground. Oh, people have been wanting me to do this. Here it is. It's the moment of truth. You guys get to experience the satisfaction with me. Oh! probably do it two-handed if I don't want to wreck the TV. <laughs> Here we go. Oh yeah, that's good. Just gave the area a one minute cleanup. Should I have done that before the video? Maybe, possibly. But either way, I'm excited to show you uh, what we've done underneath the table. We've been doing it for quite some time. Of course, we added these shelves here that you saw earlier. We got these from Ikea, right? They're perfect. So for now, I've just put the Ewok Village down there because the Ewok Village actually used to be way up there by Red 5. And you couldn't really see the detail of it. So now I put it down here and I've discovered that it needs to be dusted. So that's the uh, first set. You just heard the clicking of my knees there as I bent down. But yeah, that's the first set that I decided to put down here. It looks pretty good. I've just got to... Maybe put some green base plates down there. 
uh, maybe even build a little scene around it in this little cabinet that might be looking or that might look pretty cool and sort of match the vibe of our under table scenes over here so maybe we'll be able to make little scenes in these cubes down here now the piano used to share a home with the roman Colosseum, so it used to sit down there and the roman Colosseum was sort of angled down there but i decided to put the piano in this cube next to the Sorry about that, but I had to quit filming because I was getting another fraudulent phone call. That's typical. But yeah, we got the um, piano right here. I wasn't sure what to put in this cube, but I actually sort of dig the piano. It's not bad. One thing I will say is that I had to make up the difference in height with these 2 by 3s I do want to paint those white or maybe come up with a different solution. That is a temporary solution, although it doesn't look too bad. Maybe if they were cut to perfect size or if I found something else that would allow or that would you know match up better with these little legs here that can be adjusted but it just makes it the perfect height so it acts as table legs for our tables and what's interesting about these cabinets here is they're 120 centimeters so they actually match up perfectly with our Lindman tables which is nice now another set that I put over here is a big bin of parts <laughs> that's not a set but that's something uh, I want to clean up and we'll figure out what we're going to put there and I put Big Ben here as well I don't know what to do down here I'm thinking scenes and I'm thinking Ewok Village for sure but of course all of this stuff might move around why did I have such a hard time moving sets around well that's because all of our shelves look so good you know if I start pulling stuff like I did the Ewok Village beside Red 5, Red 5 won't fit down there by the way, it just makes these big holes. So why would I pull a bunch of stuff making big holes and then the other shelving that looks perfect doesn't look good anymore? Well, don't get me wrong, it looks good, but not as good as it would right or it does right now, right? So yeah, I've got to decide what we're going to put down here. Now, some of the other major table changes that I've done off camera here is I've actually cleaned up down here and check this out. Hey, look at that. I laid those base plates and took away the castle. No, that's not what I'm bragging about. Of course, we've still got lots of stuff going on under here, but one thing that I did do is bum 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 bum. We added lights that can change color. So yeah, Pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. We can make them blue, red, white, whatever. And they're sort of ugly lights. They're from uh, Amazon. They're really cheap. And they've been moved around a bunch. So you can see they actually project different colors. Like what's up with the three green bulbs on the right there? What's up with that? But either way, when you're not looking at that, you don't really see it. You see just a light that it projects down here. And it just brightens it up. So that's one thing that I did. Another thing that I did is trains are ready to go. We got this wise guy standing on top of his train. I can just push the power button there and we should be able to get this train going. Oh, I've got the wrong remote. Oh, okay, I better find the right remote or just the right setting, I guess. Let me tinker with this. Not number two, not number three. Is there power in this train? Okay, maybe I've got to put power in this train. The beauty of Lego trains, I wish I had the rechargeable battery packs, but I don't. But we do have those rechargeable batteries that we bought from Ikea, right? So we're going to slap them in here. ba da ba, -ba -doo, train drawer. ba da ba, -ba -doo, other train drawer currently rebuilding two blue cargo trains. ba -doo, other train drawer going to be rebuilding more trains soon. Believe me, I'm on it. I'm on it soon. I'm on it soon. You can see we got the stuff to do it. Have I taken off the sweater from around my neck? No, not yet. I'm, I'm doing it live. Got my batteries. Let's get this train fired up and I'll show you the train yard as well. Okay, just picture this, okay? Six batteries goes into this, okay? Down underneath here, we can have one, two, three, four, five trains running down there. Six batteries per box. Up here, we can have two trains going, so we can have seven trains going. Then we have one, two, three, four, five rides. So that makes 12 battery boxes. That's 72 batteries. <laughs> you would need 72 batteries to power everything in this Lego city. Crazy, eh? Okay, so here's our like conductor of the train. We could put him inside the train, but I'm thinking we're gonna keep him as like Ethan Hunt on top of the train from Mission Impossible 1. There we go. All right. On your mark, get set, and go! 
Not too fast though. Not too fast. Whoa! Hopefully all my switches are good. Oh my gosh, I didn't check my switches. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm dead serious. Ah, look at Ethan Hunt. <laughs> nice. There we go. All right, so we got the train going, so that's good. I think it's at a good speed. It's actually moving quite quickly. It's at a scary speed, but we're okay with scary speeds. Okay, so over here we got a bunch of parts that we recently acquired from the brick bin, from uh, DD Bricks in Thailand off Bricklink, from BAP, from uh, Pab Online to build trees. So we got those, we've got these, got those in the darker green color. And then we got a bunch of uh, plates here from the brick bin. And those are gonna go toward creating a textured landscape down here with all sorts of trees and stuff like that. I've gotta rebuild my waterfall, it's in shambles. We're gonna be doing that relatively soon. I wanna make it more modular this time, so if I ever have to move it, that doesn't happen, because I was actually really happy with that waterfall. And I'm sort of disappointed that I have to rebuild it now, but whatever. We're going to replace all of this with green. We're going to make some textured landscaping here, maybe a little bridge and stuff going over the river that's running through here. Then we're going to build that medieval castle or medieval fortress rather, and we're going to put it right down here uh, after we finish base plating this whole area. And we're going to base plate this whole area using green base plates from, uh, once again, the Toys R Us Bricktober sales that are continuing to happen here throughout the month of October. So we're really excited about that. Now, we are coming to the far side over here. Uh, oh my gosh, I just heard a derail. Roger that. He's going a little too fast. We'll fix him when he comes around. Come here. Oh, oh, he lost his back half. Okay. Oh, Ethan Hunt survived though. Okay, um, <laughs> so we've got this large platform right here that we're covering with these gray, or gray base plates. Thank you so much, Seam, as well, for your contribution there. That was awesome. I need to get two more of those. We're going to get those from uh, Bricktober as well. You can see that there is some space in the foreground here. Uh, Mrs. Brixie and I weren't sure what we were going to do there. We might make a permanent winter village using all of our winter village sets and landscape it and whatnot for the winter village. So we might use all those and also Hogsmeade. So it would be like castles right there, table legs, castles, and then also uh, all of the winter stuff along here. Now coming to the train yard over here, sorry, obviously it's a little bit hard to film down here. We're just here to have fun. Have fun with Lego, right? Coming over to the train yard over here, uh, there's lots of different trains and we're about to build those other ones that you saw. So we've got these large BMR kits or brick model railroader kits. And once we build those two cargo trains, Rather than having the big cargo train that we used to have over here, I parted that out. So we're going to have two blue cargo trains that should be able to work together and tow these large kits around the track if we ever wanted to get those fired up. We've got our train shed here. It needs some repairs and needs to be based onto a base plate. Unfortunately, these gray base plates that I wanted to do this whole area with were 15 inches, and this is a 40-inch platform, so we had to have a row of 10-inch base plates. I decided to use the ridiculous amount of cross plates that I have over here to do that. So that's good. You can see, uh, rather than turning around those table legs, I actually use some stilts on this side and also stilts on the other side. It's probably where the train derailed. Might have to work on securing it just a tad more. And you can see that's on the far side there as well. Just gives us a little bit more space here if we want to uh, have some more switch tracks. As you can see, there's the other blue cargo train there and a whole bunch of uh, train cars that are full of different stock and stuff like that and of course all of that stuff can go around here now i have the large factory I have to decide whether i want to transfer that onto gray base plates or if i want to run uh this uh road base plates through the center then i can have that um integrated better into the base plate area now in regards to the shelving i'll probably be you know making scenes i was also thinking of freeing up some space in our dc comics area because we have a bunch of the mini stuff there on the DC comic shelves, the mini bat wings, 
the mini Batmobiles that you don't really see. So I was contemplating moving some of that stuff over here because as you can see, all of those shelves that we bought, we actually didn't end up using them. So I could probably put like three shelves here and have all the mini Batmobile stuff. And then I'll be able to get this tumbler up there. One thing that won't fit on those shelves, I actually tried it, is the bat cave. That's not gonna fit there, so th I ruled that out essentially. But all that mini Batman stuff might look pretty cool there, and then I can get the tumbler and any other large DC stuff integrated there because it just makes sense to have all the large stuff there, and then maybe all of the small stuff over here where you can or we can see it a little bit better. Now this is what our train yard looks like, and that's all our under table changes. As you can tell, we've got lots going on. We're gonna add lots more detail, just sort of one thing at a time here in the Lego room. One thing at a time, even though there's 40 things. <laughs> it's a lot of fun though. Still got the sweater around my neck here. I hope you guys enjoyed our little update here, just sort of showing you some progress underneath the Lego table. I think those shelves look great. I think the medieval castle scene is gonna look great soon. And I think this whole area under there is going to be progressed within the next six months. Other projects include, you know, the zoo, the residential, the Ninjago, the beach, and the under table scenes, and some downtown core stuff that Mrs. Brixie's taking care of. And then once all that stuff is done, this Lego room is going to be looking mint, and then I'll destroy it all and rebuild something different. I'm just kidding, I'm not going to do that, but you never know. Everybody remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. And thank you so much for coming on by today. Have a good one.